Hey there, game developers. It's your tutorial master Titan Hex here with another RPG Maker MV Crash Course. This time we're looking at the enemies and troops tab in the database. This should be simple, sweet, and easy. All right, to begin, if you remember enemies, uh, this by the way, backtracking to that database tutorial, the enemies are what you create to put into troops. Troops are the combined amount of, or your combination of enemies that can appear on the map and in any encounter you really choose. So keep that in mind. Now we're gonna change the maximum to eight real quick, actually six. And we're gonna manipulate the bat one. So these stats are pretty simple. Uh, they don't really, the only thing that increases between these four presets that they give you is the hit points rise, but that's about it. So we're gonna wanna manipulate and change each of these to make them more appropriate for our game. In this case, I can make max HP, we'll leave it at 200, seems like a good standard. We can keep the attack at 30, seems like a good standard. We can lower its defense because it's a bat. Doesn't need magic attack, doesn't need magic, well, well, we'll make its magic defense lower so that it's more susceptible to magic. We can raise its agility to 40 and its luck to 40. So now it's a fairly lucky agile bat and there, there's a little bit more personality to this little critter. So the next one would be EXP. Let's make it so that 10 bats at level one will give you a level up. In order to figure out that, we're gonna go ahead and find our character who is probably our best control character. That is our character that's averaged out to be the standard that all the other characters are balanced off of. It's good to have something, some sort of design like that. Now, level one, it takes 50 to level up. So we're gonna make it that, so bats are five experience per kill. Now what that'll do is make it so that after 10 kills, you'll level up at level one. Super simple, super easy. Next we have the drop item menu. Drops have unfortunately a weird probability. Um, the, it's impossible to get a number between 50% and 100% of a drop rate because of the probability. It's also impossible to go beyond three drop items the exception to this is if you get a plugin, and I definitely suggest getting better plugin or getting some plugins that improve both the action patterns, otherwise known as the quote AI end quote, of the enemies. It's very limited. The action patterns are very limited. They, the AI is very stupid. The drop items are very limited. And it's unfortunate that they haven't fixed this in this version, but what can you do? So one out of two is a 50% chance and one out of one is a 100% chance. And every time you go higher, one out of three, 33. So these are the numbers that they just give you to work with. We can make it so that there's a 50% chance when killing a bat, a potion will drop. And we can just say three gold for killing one. We can also boost its evasion rate because it's a bat. And traits, if you remember, are in actors and classes. Uh, we have traits, we learn traits from that tutorial. If you want, you can go ahead and set a whole bunch of traits to the monster, but otherwise it's not completely necessary. Uh, they give you some standards. You can, you can increase or decrease them as you feel necessary. Then we have slimes. So we can, we can add some personality to this. We could give it higher magic defense and defense. Uh, we can make its attacks or whatever lower, its agility and luck lower. We can play with a whole bunch of stuff around here. But let's, let's go ahead and look into action patterns though. That's the next area where a lot can happen. So this is sort of the AI. The way you just choose a skill, the way it works is you can create a skill, come up over here to action patterns and then add them to the character. We can make it so that you, the monster will wait. Hold on, let me make sure I'm adding one. There we go. Make sure that the monster can wait if its HP is 75% to 100%. So if its HP is above 
three fourths, it has a chance to wait. Ooh, rating is an odd little number. Whenever it checks the conditions, whatever condition is met, it looks for the highest rating. So if I have this and the monster's HP is 100%, the it checks the highest rating. That highest rating is the one that it'll pick unless there's another rating within one to two of it or well within two places of it so let's go ahead and show you uh, three and double attack we'll go with that so there is a here it says it right here there is a two out of third chance or two out of three chance that the one directly below it in number will happen so it will go five and then there's a two out of three chance that if it doesn't pick five it'll it, it's very weird uh, <laughs> that uh, it'll use the, that skill and then double attack for example is one out of three chance because it's within two of attack also within two of weight so it, it's got a really weird sort of pattern just know that you want to be if you want the skill to actually take effect it really should be within about two thirds so let's say wait let's jump this to six so that it's more than likely if they're um if your hp is or if the bat's hp is 75 to 100 percent it'll wait and then there's a, a small chance that it'll attack makes them a little less harmful to fight and then once you hit that point where it's less than 75%, it'll start to double attack because it's no longer counting for six. It's counting for five and within three is within two of five. It's very mathematical. Just play around with the numbers. Uh, give it give it some testing. It, it'll hopefully make more sense as you try it out. Uh, read the rating description should definitely help you'll you'll get it down don't worry so we can also add some other stuff to this for example escape so we of course have the turn number this is the base turn it starts the first check so uh, you can always read this but basically oh, sorry i got a scratch so basically if I want it to take effect at like two um, and then happen every three, this is generally the number you would use. So on turn, well, actually, hmm. it's a little tricky. Uh, actually, no, no, it's not tricky at all. <laughs> it tells you right here, uh, for two plus three, so it starts on turn two, and then every three turns will go. So that would be five, eight, and then eleven, and it starts at turn two for the first time it tries to escape. So that's sort of how turn works: HP when it's within that percentage, MP within that percentage, state if a certain state is applied, uh, it'll try to do something, and then party level. If my party level is five or above, uh, it'll try to escape. And there is a 100% chance it'll just run. We of course have switch and those are good for boss fights. Uh, you won't be using them too much in the action patterns, but it's good to know that it's there. And there's, there's a few instances where you'll probably use it. So let's hop over to troops. Let's add a new troop. Of course, we add the monsters using this tab so we can do three bats uh, we can always click a bat and then hit remove to get rid of it or clear and just get rid of everything so we're gonna start with three bats and a slime oh that's not a slime boom add and a line makes it so that they line up in a direct row you usually don't always want that, especially with multiple monsters. So you can just drag them around to align them manually, like so. 
And when we hit auto name, it'll give it its own name. Very useful, uh, very informative. So just auto name usually works out really well. Then we can change the background to whatever we want. This mainly takes place in a uh, in the battle test. So change BG doesn't do anything for the game. It's just really just for the battle test to see how it looks and if everything looks proper for that battle background. We'll go ahead and give it a look. This here is the battle test menu. It's great for setting up hypothetical scenarios. The party can be set however you want. In this case, I only have two actors in the party. We're testing out a battle. Uh, you can choose what equipment they start at, what level they start at. In this case, I'm gonna start them at level two. We can hit that initialize button to see what like they start out at the first time. Uh, the first time you get them Just different things we can test so we're going to try it like this it's going to load mv and battle's going to take place now we can just test the whole thing out so we can see a few of them waiting uh, they're not all going to wait of course and now that i've hit the bat back here a couple times he's going to start getting mad and he's gonna attack far more frequently. Stuff like that, by the way, very useful. We can apply that to uh, bosses where like there's 10 or s some really crazy amount of enemies. Like let's make a boss battle with, oh, we can only add four bats. You can always download a plugin to allow you to have more than this amount. Oh, never mind. I was wrong. You can have more. They just kind of stack on each other. So I could set it up so that this battle has eight bats. So you'd want to use AOE. The problem is if you don't do enough damage to kill them off outright, they end up with low hit points or lower than the halfway hit point or lower than the what is it three quarter hit points that we set for their attack and then they start doing attacks and double attacks um, so aoe -ing them as much as you'd want to if you can't kill them with the aoe you don't want to do it so there, there there could be a cool little boss battle like that uh where you actually want to kill them off one by one so that they use their weight far more often um, for a safer battle cool little things like that can really get your uh monster your your players brains ticking um, auto name that eight bats. You could throw a boss into this too. So just, just keep that in mind. There's neat little things you can do. By the way, uh, I almost forgot, but there is, if you select image, a nice little hue adjuster, and that can do cool little things that allow you to have special enemies. So in this case, I could copy the bat and change its hue just slightly to something like this call it moonlight moonlit bat and this could be the sort of boss in that battle could give him 350 hit points uh, 35 attack 20 defense doesn't need magic attack up its m defense 45 and 45 uh, never tries to escape always tries to double attack about half as much as uh actually more, more than that i'm gonna say a lot of the time it'll try to double attack uh it will of course have a, a weight on it so we can throw the weight rating up to seven so it'll more often not wait but if it's a hit points get lower than 75 you know what we can even boost this let's let's throw this down to uh 85 percent its hp is uh if that action isn't met, it's going to do double attacks more often than attack every now and then. So we have this cool little crazy bat to throw into this boss battle. Oh, careful. Remove. Add. Nice little setup right here. So it could be a cool boss battle.
Yeah, I like that. Moonlit bat. And we could even put boss moonlit bat. Neat. So we have a cool setup here, a troop uh, that we can end up fighting, um, battle tested and everything. So this one, we wouldn't even have to do anything special, but if we wanted to, we can have some battle events. You should know some eventing for this, and we'll get into this when we get into eventing, but this allows you to do really cool things. Um, you could set up special encounters that have different things that happen. Very, very awesome stuff. Um, of course, eventing, it's awesome. We'll get into that later on. Thank you. That sums up this whole tutorial, the enemies and the troops. Hopefully you learned something. Always like, comment, subscribe. Tell me a little bit about the game you're working on. Tell me a little bit about what you want to learn. Get, get some creative juices flowing. Let's see what we can do together as game developers. Thank you, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.